The province of British Columbia is continuing to go straight for the jugular of unvaccinated healthcare workers, and that's why some physicians need your help. So if people are in our health care system and not recognizing the important uh, importance of vaccination, then uh, this is probably not the right profession for them, to be frank. Drea Humphrey here with Rebel News, and you're not going to believe this. Danish Health has stopped offering COVID-19 vaccines to healthy people under age 50, and even Sleepy Joe Biden has woken up to the science that says the pandemic is over, but not in the province of British Columbia. Oh no, you see, the unelected public health lord there, Dr. Bonnie Henry, actually just revamped the order that's been preventing thousands of healthy, willing, and able healthcare workers from working in hospitals and certain community settings that includes nurses, surgeons, pediatricians, lifesavers like Dr. Chris McAllister, who you are about to hear from in just a moment. But first, let me explain why he desperately needs your help. You see, Dr. McAllister puts the E in essential by being one of only two pediatricians working in the city of Port Alberni. That's right. If you need a, an emergency C-section or you have a severely ill child, you better hope that the city's only one pediatrician isn't off that day. But get this. It's no longer just Dr. Henry's health mandates that are keeping unjabbed lifesavers away from BC hospitals. Now... The province's health authorities are coming to cancel vaccine-free physicians completely. Take a look at this letter that Dr. McAllister received from Vancouver Island Health. It's about the outcome of a board of directors hearing after Vancouver Island Health President and CEO Kathy McNeil and the Health Authority Medical Advisory Committee recommended that Dr. McAllister's privileges at the hospital he worked at be cancelled. Poof. Gone. And get this, instead of doing what they should have done, which is plead with Dr. Bonnie Henry and the province's premier, John Horgan, to get our healthcare workers back doing what they do, the powers that be at Vancouver Island Health, who have been making headlines for staffing shortages that are closing ERs and health centers, actually went through with it. That's right. They ruled in favor of cancelling his privileges. Poof! A form of disciplinary action that if stands means that even if Dr. Henry ever decides to free her professional captives by dropping her vaccine mandates for healthcare workers, vaccine-free physicians like Dr. McAllister will still not be able to care for patients in hospitals. And that means, my friends, it will literally pave the way for unvaccinated physicians licensing colleges to take their license away altogether. You think I'm exaggerating? Listen to our health minister, Adrian Dix, tell you what's in store for the province himself. This is critical for the provision of healthcare services. I think it's as important for family doctors and for dentists and for people working in the community to be vaccinated. The vast majority of them are, I think, and uh, of doctors, 98, 99%. Um, but you will expect that uh, very soon. That work is being done and being done through the colleges. So this will be a condition of license for people. This medical madness has to stop, and that's where you and I come in. Thank God for our charity partners at the Democracy Fund because they've d agreed to take on Dr. McAllister's case at no charge to him, and they've already hired an amazing lawyer. His name is Lee Turner. He's based out of Kelowna, and he's already been working hard on the appeal process for this coercive attack against doctors' bodily autonomy and medical choice. Now, we have a special website you can go to right now. You can pull out a different device. It's called savethedoctors.ca. And please donate what you can if you're concerned about what's happening to medical freedom and medical professionals in British Columbia. All of the costs go 100% to the Democracy Fund to pay these legal fees. And again, they really can't do this fight without you. So again, that's save the doctors.ca. And once you're done that, we've made it really simple for you to send an email instantly out to everybody who made this decision at Vancouver Island Health, as well as Dr. Bonnie Henry and the usuals. So again, that is savethedoctors.ca. And Dr. Chris McAllister joins us now. Thank you so much for being on Rebel News today. 
Oh, thanks for having me. Yeah, my pleasure. Now, I think the first time I stumbled upon your name was when someone in your in Port Alberni came up with a petition advocating for you. Uh, that was quite some time. Do you remember that petition? Yeah, so that was back in November of 2021. And uh, essentially, we had uh, had to get vaccinated or lose our positions by the end of October. Mm -hmm. And so I had done this little piece on a local news show. To not be able to have my own decision for my body has has been really, really tough. The pediatrician, one of only two in Port Alberni, can no longer help with care at the hospital, working on cases ranging from C-sections to suicidal teens. A petition has been started questioning how removing McAllister's hospital privileges improves care in a community that already struggles to attract doctors and specialists. Got some signatures. It really just, for me, I think, showed me that there were a lot of people that just really backed me and my decisions. Well, and that's what it looks like. Port Alberni is certainly not a big place, and it showed that people were behind you. They valued what you've been doing, how you've been serving them as a physician in their area. Now, I'm going to ask you to sort of toot your horn a bit because. In that area, as far as, uh, you know, medically, you're a big deal there. So tell us what you've been doing, how many years, um, how many other doctors do what you do in that area? Okay. So I, I arrived here back in 1997. Um, there weren't any pediatricians working at the time. The previous pediatrician, unfortunately, had Parkinson's and deteriorated really quickly. And so they needed a pediatrician. So the obstetrician at the time, he was the one that recruited me. He cold called everyone in BC, didn't get any answers. And at that point I was in Calgary. And then, so I got a cold call from the obstetrician at the time. So since 1997, I've been here. The first 12 years, I was a solo pediatrician. Uh, these last six years, I've had the honor of working with Dr. Kofi Afram. So he's another general pediatrician like myself. And so a brief stint in between, there was three of us. So I always say those first 12 years and these last six, there's essentially been either one or just two. And so we've actively recruited for close to 18 years. And if you look at the population of Port Alberni, it's one of the fastest growing populations on Vancouver Island. Maybe not as fast as Langford. That seems to always win some awards, but um, it is a very fast uh, growing population over 20,000 now from last count, plus we service a lot of the outlying areas. So traditional territories, Oceanside, the West Coast. Um, and so that's all, that's all extra that we do. And the biggest issue really is when you're on call by yourself or even just two of you, it's extremely onerous. So for two of us, the last six years essentially means every other weekend you're on call the entire weekend. Yeah. And with this fast growing population, it really has gotten busier and busier. And probably everyone will tell you in pediatrics, the biggest change over the last five to 10 years definitely has been the increase of psychiatric conditions. So we, we service a lot of um, patients with mental health issues because we just don't have a um, pediatric psychiatrist in the area. They're amazing. We do, we do consult with them, but there's no one in the area. Closest is Nanaimo. And of course we have some backup in Victoria. But they're also very, very busy. So we end up doing a lot of psychiatry. I mean, that is just, I mean, also I'm thinking of C-sections. You're probably on call for that, or you were when you were allowed to work in the hospital. I mean, it just sounds like you have such a valuable role. And I have an interview coming up for everybody, especially um, if you're considering donating towards the fight for you to not lose your privileges um, at fightvaccinepassports.com. I have an interview coming up with your council. Our charity partners at the Democracy Fund hired a great lawyer, and he really explains also that, you know, there's two of you now, or there was two of you, essentially, and you guys have been looking for years for to replace mm -hmm. that third. Um, so the fact that you, the second or one of two um, physicians or pediatricians, is not allowed to work in the hospital anymore because of these mandates. In your words, how do you think that's affecting your community? Oh, it's impacting it greatly. Ultimately, um, Kofi, my colleague, he just cannot be on call every no. single day. So there's yeah. gaps in service. Uh, any sick child or teenager comes in, they have to be shipped out. It puts a lot of strain on the system. It's increased cost. 
puts a lot of strain on the eMERGE staff that have to do all of the work and they're trying to still run the emergency department. Um, it's very stressful for the families, the patients. Um, it, it just puts the stress on, on, on the whole, the, from the top down, everyone is just a bit more stressed. Yeah. Meanwhile, Danish Health is saying, eh, if you're under 50, you don't really you need, need to take the vaccine. But look what we're doing to physicians like you who have, for whatever reason, chosen not to get this vaccine. Now, let's talk about um, most people, especially in British Columbia, know that healthcare workers and physicians like yourself have not been able to work in the hospital since these mandates have come down. But what happened to you since then? What is the fight that uh, we are helping you with by having mm -hmm. our generous viewers at Rebel News donate a fight vaccine passports for? Yeah, Drea, I, 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 I'm going to try to answer the question in between a few other things. I think the first thing is for people to realize that still to this day, um, if I go into the hospital, um, it's six months in jail and it's a $25,000 fine per day, per day that I, do, I go against the public health order. But first, we need to give everybody the opportunity to be immunized. That is really important in healthcare. And um, I have very little patience for people who aren't immunized in healthcare. And that will be, um, we've had a vaccinator mask policy for influenza. We will have a very similar um, policy that if people choose not to be immunized and you work in the healthcare, then you will not be able to work in certain settings without taking additional measures. There will be consequences for that decision. And most people, when I tell them that, they're absolutely shocked. They cannot believe that's still in place. The second thing that people don't realize is that um, this isn't just about losing my privileges. Essentially, if you lose privileges, it looks very bad on your record. Um, Lee Turner will go into the details, but essentially they will proceed to go forward and remove my licensing completely. So I will not be able to practice in an office. And I, I want to tell you, I'm, I'm one of the really fortunate ones. Many of my colleagues are completely hospital-based. Surgeons, yeah. anesthetists, a number of other workers, they haven't worked at all since October. I've had the absolute blessing of being able to run an office still. I don't think that's right. It's his personal choice if he wants to get that vaccination or not. Jennifer Busby, who is double-vaxxed herself, says McAllister's care saved her son when he was in his teens. Our town is losing one of its best pediatricians by them locking him out of the hospital. So the fight for me is, yes, to get my privileges back. But ultimately, um, I think my fight is really for my colleagues who have not worked at all since October. My fight wow. is also, I would say, for the next generation um, so that they have some choices available to them. Now, I want to make just one other comment, and that's that I have had COVID. There's over 150 good yeah. studies now showing that natural immunity is better or as good as a primary series. And, and many people see that. Um, but the hospital, um, the privileges board that, that's basically looking after this hasn't acknowledged that at all. Mm -hmm. And, and that's really bothersome for me. I want to, again, kind of ask a question around sort of how your community is coping with this. Again, if you are one of two pediatricians, you're no longer allowed in the hospital. Situations are happening like C-sections and things like that. What about the hospital staff that used to work with you? Are, are they reaching out to you, contacting? Like, what is happening in that area? Mm. I would say that we work in one of the most unique hospitals um, almost anywhere. It's a very small hospital and you get to know everybody, not just doctors and nurses, but you get to know the cleaning staff, people that work in laundry. I'm talking everybody. Uh, so we are all so important. Like to run a little hospital like that, you, you lose one person that cleans up. It, it's quite devastating. You lose one pediatrician. It's devastating. People are scared to reach out when I do see them on the streets, when I see them at the grocery store. Um, people are really behind me, but it's, I think it's been very difficult, difficult for my colleagues and my, the extended staff, whether they're nurses or other people, just to really sort of make a stand for me. But I know they do back me. And uh, again, I think they're in a really precarious situation. Um, again, it comes with major penalties if you don't follow these orders. And, and just to be clear, when you say lose your privileges, maybe explain exactly what that would look like. 
Oh, okay. So essentially right now, I just can't go into the hospital. And you're right. So I, I certainly was involved with C-sections. Um, I, I did a lot two. of emergency. Okay, there you go. <laughs> yeah, so yeah. I know. I know. You guys got to get there fast, <laughs> you know? Yeah. And then all of the emergencies in, a, in um, that would be with either babies, sick babies, sick children, um, adolescents. So that could be psychiatric emergencies. It could be other health emergencies. Any sort of trauma, um, often I work in conjunction with other people, such as surgeons, but we don't have a pediatric surgeon. So we generally make a team of a pediatrician and general surgeon. Um, so what happens is maybe to further answer your question is that there are a lot of children that come through the emergency department that need help. I still get a lot of emails. I get uh, faxes. Um, a lot of my colleagues still continue to call me from the emergency department uh, just for advice. Sometimes what they'll do is stabilize someone and then phone me and say, hey, can you see this patient in the next day or two? So we're still working together as a team. We're trying to get through this. But ultimately, that's what it means about privileges. Nothing in the hospital. And then again, going forward, if, if this isn't reversed, then I would lose my license completely to practice in the community, in a, in a private clinic um, any of the other work that I do with, you know, the ministry and things like that, I would lose all of that as well. What was really hurtful is what we talked about is that people didn't necessarily reach out to me. My colleagues, this is a very small community. We, my colleagues are my friends. Yeah, um, and course. it's, I feel like I've lost all my friends in this. And again, I, I was very hurt. Um, I haven't got to any sort of bitter stage, but I've, I've definitely got to a point where I've forgiven people and I'm not going to treat people back the way I feel I was treated. Mm -hmm. And that means reaching out to people in different ways, um, yeah. whether they're vaccinated or not. Um, it mm -hmm. just goes so far to just reach out to someone and say, how are you doing? And not even worry about their vax status, not worry about a lot yeah. of other things, just mm -hmm. reach out. And I, I felt like very few people reached out when I, when they meet me in person and it's not, you know, they feel like they can just talk openly. <laughs> They're very kind and, and people are so supportive. It's mm -hmm. an amazing community. It's, it's a really close knit community. Well, it, I mean, that's the way it should be. You should be able to communicate with people regardless of their vaccination status. I don't know what sort of clown world we're living in where this sort of this conversation is even happening. I'll be honest. Um, thank you so much for taking the mm. time to explain this situation, you seem so calm and cool and collective. <laughs> and, um, you know, I hope that people in your area are able to watch this and more across the country and really get behind you. Tell them, uh, the people watching, sort of how many doctors you're in contact with that are facing around a similar situation. You know, the numbers, um, I know that there's about 50 key people in BC. Um, in terms of allied health, we were told that there were thousands of people that lost jobs. There were many people yeah. that retired early that yeah. maybe aren't counted. But so you're talking about hundreds of mm -hmm. doctors and thousands of doctors and allied health professionals across mm -hmm. BC. That's just BC. Wow. This mm -hmm. is huge. And uh, is huge. essentially, whatever happens to you in this fight sets precedent for everyone else. So it's an important mm -hmm. fight to have. I, I can't imagine the stress you must have gone under. So thank you for being on Rebel News again. We'll keep everybody updated on your story and perhaps some more of those 50 in your circle. I've interviewed other physicians um, who are concerned about what's been happening to them as well. So thank you again. Uh, thanks for your time. I really appreciate it. It's been an honor. It's a brilliant scheme, isn't it? Dr. Bonnie Henry can finally drop her draconian orders against unvaccinated physicians while the legacy media runs the story as a step towards normalcy, when in reality she'll know that health authorities and licensing colleges have been working together to usher these unvaccinated doctors out the back door. Stop this medical Madness. Go to savethedoctors.ca.